I got my fiance and the kids out. I got them to leave. Okay. My mom and my sister, they didn't want to leave. Because you saw people on the news with holding pictures up saying, do you know where my mom is? Yeah. Right. We didn't want to be one of those people. Right. But we wasn't overly concerned because we said, well, the water isn't going to get much higher. We'll be all right. And all of a sudden, water just started come gushing. We were wrong. The water kept rising. Everyone was looting. There was a police station there near, near the Winn-Dixie. And I have four kids. I'm like, OK. I was prepared to come and pay for some food here, but what am I to do? We managed to walk out. We were, by that time, we were almost chest deep. I asked the cops that was on the balcony, can I go in there and get food for my kids? He just raised his hand. I'm like, it's so on use. It should have been four hours to get there. It took us about seven because we kept getting lost because we were insane at that point, delirious, no sleep. So they sent a deputy sheriff out with a uh, deuce and a half army truck to rescue us, and it drowned out before it could get to us. It kept telling us we were going to get food to eat, never had no food to eat. I would venture to say the water got to be at least 20, maybe 22 feet where we were. It was about seven to eight feet from going over the peak of his house. When the news people came, that's when they decided to start trying to help us. Because I, I, I was hungry. I hadn't eaten since about 9 o'clock that morning when I had left uh, Meridian. And they told us that no matter what, we had to evacuate. The floodgate had burst, and it was assumed that there was going to be a lot of water coming in. We needed to leave. And at that time, it became a panic in moment. And my friend, Mr. Swepman, is a big man. He weighs about 350 pounds, and his lips was turning blue, and he was starting to shiver. And then the guy came back. He brought me $5, and somebody else gave me $5. And the two people behind the counter gave me $5. So I had from nothing, I had $26. We're not even wanting to kill each other yet. It's brought us closer, actually. That's why I was hesitant about talking to your body because it really hurts me inside when I think about all of it again, you know? It's just been one hell of a trip. <laughs> but we get to go back maybe in <clears throat> three days. We've been in this hotel for two weeks. two weeks now. I mean, I love my home. I don't, I don't appreciate the way they treated us, but I know I can't take it out on where I come from. Natural disasters, you can't yeah. stop them. I mean, you know, you see this on TV and, ah, oh, this will never happen. It you feel it. bad for them, but. Yeah. i tell you one thing. They could tell me a tropical storm coming and I'm gone. From my understanding, I had 11 to 12 feet of water, so you can look up at the top of the ceiling and see nothing but mildew cover the whole ceiling. Okay, so sick. Mama's sick. <laughs> We're mama mama sick. sick. Yeah. We're on our mama. Yeah. I miss my mom. But really, we just thought that we would be taking a few days vacation. Sure. We were excited. We only packed some clothing and belongings right. for a few days. Right. I never once thought that it would be that way. So, I don't know what I'm going to do. Now, that's a million dollar question. I said, well, I'll leave all the shoes under the bed. Mm -hmm. I know nothing would happen to the shoes being under the bed. Yeah. And when I was at the hotel and they were talking about the flooding, I was like, the shoes, all the shoes are under the <laughs> bed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you think about material things at the uh -huh. moment, uh -huh. but in the end, I thought about my life and my kids.